greatest marketing lessons ever in history. Before beginning his first film studio, Laughagram, Walt Disney was literally fired by a local newspaper producer in Kansas for lacking creativity. Before co-founding Apple Computer in the family garage, Steve Jobs dropped out of college and drifted for a while. And before coming known as the father of advertising, advertising superstar David Ogilvy started his career by selling stoves. And these remain some heart-hitting examples for not only marketeers, but masses around the globe. Although the best marketeers of all time have diverse lessons to teach us and have distinct methods and beliefs, they all produce the same outcomes. Conversions, leads and loyalty. But none of these legendary marketeers has naturally possessed brilliant strategies. They were influenced, shaped and formed over the course of their entire lives. Marketing professionals thus can learn from the mistakes and achievements of people who went before them and apply those lessons to themselves. But where to begin? Well, do you know that some of the greatest marketing lessons are hidden in the talks of great leaders like Aristotle and Luther King? So you can literally begin anywhere. Beginning from right here. Welcome to Skillset, your one-stop shop for all things finance, business, marketing and money topics. Of course, the crypto, NFTs and metaverse and all blockchain-related topics are not left out. We are a group passionate about seeing you educated about those topics, but we promise to keep entertaining you. So kindly like and share this video if you find it helpful. Also, smash that subscribe button for more videos like this. In today's video, we will walk you through history to learn some of the most important yet surprising lessons in marketing from some of the most significant philosophers, thinkers and figures in humankind. Use one or all of the following well-known marketing strategies to develop your own marketing strategy. Number 1. Socrates – The Socratic Method or Logical Questioning and Hypotheses When a person poses logical questions and hypotheses to build new ideas, it is said to be the Socratic method of stimulation and investigation. Interactive marketing must build itself on this method to engage the consumer. When you make people engage in a debate or a discussion over your set of questions, you can lead your team through the received thoughts to build on more relevant marketing strategies and fresh concepts for products. Based on a similar method, you can also engage with your team over a discussion, letting yourself challenge the accepted wisdom, custom and traditions. Aristotle – Logos, Pathos and Ethos One of the aspects of marketing is persuasion or manipulation. The Greek philosopher Aristotle breaks down the idea of persuasion into Logos, Pathos and Ethos. Logos defines the use of logic to convince someone. The consumer can be persuaded by using logical arguments along with convincing evidence. Pathos aims to appeal to human emotions. Marketeers can connect with their audience and give their content a human touch by means of effective and logical storytelling. Lastly, ethics is defined by the term ethos, which works on the essential premise of credibility. It means that without credibility, you can never persuade anyone of anything at all. That's why personal branding is considered a good idea for influencing and brand building. Number 3. Abraham Lincoln – Quality over Quantity Lincoln was a master orator, and his words remain relevant even today. He once said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four hours sharpening the axe. Incredible lesson by the master politician. Time spent on planning is the first step towards a master marketing scheme. Also, it is more important to focus on the quality of your work than the number of hours you put into completing or collecting projects. Instead, concentrate on fewer but more significant projects and campaigns. That's why it is said, Quality over quantity. Number 4. Tim Ferriss – Huge Promise Tim Ferriss, the 4-hour workweek author, is known to be one of the modern marketing professionals. He highlighted a bitter truth about society or people. He said people like the idea of big promises, even if they are not practically possible and consumers are not getting the exact result, but a little of what is being marketed. For example, getting an ideal physique within a span of a month, even if it's not exactly possible. The interesting part is that at least the person would begin working on it and the intended promise makes one feel assisted along with one's choice, encouraging them and making them feel happy. If you were promising them stars, you were at least making them happy, even if you're not exactly serving the actual stars to them. Number 5. David Ogilvy – Testing and Language of Communication Never stop testing and your advertising will never stop improving, said the father of advertising David Ogilvy. He has been known for his early attempts with novel and dangerous marketing strategies. Ogilvy was a pioneer in A-B testing, 
It is also known as split testing. It involves testing two variations of service, offer or pages to see which one gets the best response from consumers. Marketeers may use modest adjustments to have big effects by using split testing more frequently. Here are some pointers for effective testing. Set an objective to begin working. Choose variables or parameters to investigate and test. Analyze the results of each. Retest after the changes are achieved. Lastly, make sure to be an expert with your language. As good as Martin Luther King Jr. and his I Have a Dream speech. In the words of Ogilvy, if you're trying to persuade people to do something or buy something, it seems to me you should use their language. The language they use every day. The language in which they think. We try to write in the vernacular. Number 6. Conrad Gessner, Word of Mouth Marketing Conrad Gessner is said to be the creator of Word of Mouth Marketing. As Gessner noted, it can be manipulated. Tulip Mania was a poem written by him in the mid-1600s that introduced the Europeans to the tulip flower, and buyers used to pay, as per today's standards, approximately a million dollars for a single bulb of tulip. That's the power of word of mouth. Number 7. Estee Lauder – Personal Branding and Influence Estee Lauder worked up to become the CEO of her own multinational cosmetics conglomerate, Clinique Mac Cosmetics and Estee Lauder. A millionaire, she introduced the significance of influencer marketing techniques. She saw the value of getting items into the hands of people who could authentically spread the brand's message, like family, friends and acquaintances. Lauder used to happily give away free merchandise to them, thus revealing the importance of expanding the reach and influence of the target market. Develop partnerships, alliances and initiatives that benefit both parties and produce outcomes. Number 8. John Caples Keep it simple, starting with the headline. To impress your offer on the mind of the reader or listener, it is necessary to put it into brief, simple language. No far-fetched or obscure statement will stop them. You have to hit them where they live, in the heart or the head. You have got to catch their eyes or ears with something simple, something direct, and something they want. Explain the renowned direct response marketer and copywriter John Cables. He is best known for an advertisement headline, They laughed when I sat down at the piano, but when I started to play, for the US School of Music. They laughed when remains a lead-in for many copywriters, even today. He grouped the four types of product headlines. Become taller and stronger, self-interest headline. Welcome to our new branch, news headline. Ready for a healthier life, make them curious headline. Five simple ways to get slim, solution-oriented headline. With people's attention span reducing to merely 5 to 15 seconds, a good headline would make all the difference to your success. And we've saved the two most loved genius creators for the last. Before we touch on their strategies and lessons, make sure to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Number 9. Walt Disney. Details makes you stand out. The best professionals are those who can work on the details of the project and make the best out of every aspect of it. In 1967, when one of the employees pointed out that something was not completely right with one of the rides of the Pirates of the Caribbean, the people made him take his time with it and tell them what was missing out. He mentioned that in Bayou at night, there are fireflies. To bring the same magic and feel here, this was necessary. And so, Walt Disney incorporated simulated fireflies into the area. The attraction is still one of the most well-liked ones in the park today. Walt Disney may sound like a perfectionist with this, but even if he wasn't, he understood that small, small things could make a big difference. And considering the previous point about people's shorter visual attention, it is even more important to pay attention to such details. As the master of creating magic himself said, when we consider a project, we really study it. Not just the surface idea, but everything about it. And when we go into that new project, we believe in it all the way. We have confidence in our ability to do it right. And we work hard to do the best possible job. Number 10. Steve Jobs, Event Marketing or Brilliant Storyteller Kawasaki, a marketer who worked with Steve Jobs, once mentioned, Steve was the greatest marketer ever. Jobs' idea was to create original and memorable experiences for people. And that's where he stood apart in creating cool designs, along with producing amazing technology. No doubt, he was a brilliant storyteller. Also, not to forget, he wasn't the first one to do that. But he really pulled it off. Steve Jobs also executed one of the most significant corporate turnarounds in history. He turned a nearly bankrupt Apple into a tremendously profitable company. 
One of its most successful commercials of Apple was Why 1984 Won't Be Like 1984, where they launched its Macintosh PC with a Super Bowl commercial. It highlighted how Macintosh would free the consumers instead of confining them. But this isn't the story. The story began when Apple was shaken to a core for once when the leading market research company analyzed the advertisement and said that it was one of the least effective commercials that it had ever tested. Interestingly, Apple took the risk and consumers purchased $155 million worth of Macintosh PCs within three months of the Super Bowl. Apple described this as event marketing, where the advertising is so groundbreaking that the event receives attention. The mastermind Steve Jobs explains himself during one of his sessions. It's not about pop culture, it's not about fooling people, and it's not about convincing people that they want something they don't. We figure out what we want, and I think we're pretty good at having the right discipline to think through whether a lot of people are going to want it too. That's what we get paid to do. So you can't go out and ask people, you know, what's the next big thing? There's a quote by Henry Ford, right? He said, If I had asked my customers what they wanted, they would have told me a faster horse. The more informative your advertising, the more persuasive it will be, was once said by Ogilvy. This is interesting because it opposes our ideas in a short time span. The thing is, once the interest is picked up by reading a brilliant headline, the consumer would like to read or get the details. Thus, keep your consumer's problem areas and aspirations at the forefront of everything you do and the results will come automatically. Also, keep looking more at such strategies. Do your research and then you can begin building in your own world, which, who knows, can turn into as grand and as big as Disney one day. And with such hopeful dreams extended to you, handed over to you, we take your adroit. But hey, make sure to like this video and for more such content, subscribe to our channel.